Good evening and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. I'm myself, Stephen George. Good evening. Good evening. It's Sunday, the 10th of June, 2018, and we have a, a busy show tonight. We have two great guests on, Thomas Williams and Randy Morgans. We're going to be catching up with Thomas and Randy in a few minutes and finding out what's been going on in their life and what things are going on on the planet and in the world in general. But before we do that, let's find out what the communication channels are. Okay, folks, communi- communication channels. The communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. Yes, the OYM chat room, you can access that by visiting the website oymradio.com. You will see the links there on the left hand side uh, for the chat room and for all other. Great information contained on the site, but uh, if you want to access the chat room, you will need a username and password. Uh, you can get that by dropping us an email to info at oymradio.com, and you can also use the same email address just to let us know where you're listening from and uh, what you think of the show, uh, and uh, that's much appreciated. Also, we also have the phone number 046-927-1212. If you're going to call in from outside Republic of Ireland, it's 00353 and uh, just to check us out on Facebook as well, the old anti-social media. You'll find us there. All the links, the relevant links uh, to everything uh, that you need will be found on the website there on the left-hand side, including the text number and the Twitter details also. Brilliant stuff. I mean, I'd like to say that on the communication side, the MeWe channel is really picking up. We've uh, definitely got a lot of people now on MeWe. I think there's a, a lot of people afraid to chat. I know the THI people are great chatters and they have a great chat amongst themselves, but the, the OAM people seem to be very shy. So don't be afraid to speak to each other on MeWe, guys. Have a chat and get on there and if there's anything that I see, I'm going to jump in and uh, have a chat about it. Maybe also. we haven't figured out how to chat on this <laughs> week. <laughs> well, I'm okay. I'm getting used to it yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit more different than Facebook, I have to say. And it I, is. I've actually, I have found myself kind of f- trying to figure out how to do things on it as well. So, yeah, it's not plain sailing. No, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Change mm. is difficult, but we'll get there. Yeah. Um, right, okay. First on the list is we had the United We Start Radio uh, round table yesterday. And it was just uh, myself, Detlev, Matt and Michael talking about things that are going on in the world and the planet and everything else. So if you want to check out that podcast, if you pop over to unitedwestart.org and if you go to the podcast archive page, the podcast will be there and you can have to listen to the four of us having a chat about um, bits and pieces and things that are going on. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that's where you'll find it. Steve, over to you. Yeah, yes, some news from the independent.ie and it says survivors are outraged at a plan to seal abuse reports for 75 years. Uh, Survivors of institutional abuse abuse have expressed outrage over government plans to seal all major industrial school and orphanage investigation records for 75 years. Uh, The move, which also follows the possible destruction of documents, must now be ratified by by the Dáil in a bill which will be brought forward by Education Minister Jan O'Sullivan. But why seal them for 75 years? Why not seal them for 5 years, 10 years maybe? Uh, By the time they can be accessed again, everyone associated with this most shameful period of Irish history will be long since dead. Uh, The whole thing won't be anything more than a footnote in history by 2090, he said. Uh, uh, These uh, range from rapes, beatings and the starvation of children to youngsters being hired out as cheap labour. The abuse was described as endemic. Uh, and was said to be the most shameful episode in the history of the Irish state. And uh, I mean, yeah, how many times have we seen this before? Something horrible happens. Uh, Everyone kind of knows who's involved and who needs to be taken to task, but, you know, it never happens. Documents are sealed and that's it. Don't adjust it. Well, my opinion on this is that whoever is saying that they have to be sealed for 75 years, I'd start investigating them. Oh, yeah. Right? Straight away, whoever is the one that's trying to push this to be sealed for 75 years, I'd be investigating them. We, the people have, that have been involved in this abuse over the years, I bet you are still alive. And some of them are probably in, um, in, uh, in positions of power, either in the government or in the church. And they know that if their name comes out, they're going to be destroyed are locked up or jailed or whatever because if uh, the, the, the people that have been abused come forward. So anyone that says they're going to be sealing them, I'd start off with them. They should not be sealed. They should be brought out in the public. They should be exposed in the public. And people should know 
what went on at that time. There's too much of this. We have to seal it. We have to hide it. We have to bury it. That's why we had the Ryan report. Finally, all the abuse. I mean, abuse in the church was a conspiracy theorist idea. It was a cons- conspiracy theory years ago. Oh, the, the priest state never abused children. No, 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 we couldn't. No, 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 that, 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 that won't happen. And then we had the Ryan report and then all came out about the abuse of the kids. So, you know, this has to come out. This, the whole idea of being sealed, I totally disagree with. Right, okay, and another thing on the agenda here before we go off to Alan Steve's week is that the buzz.ie uh, have reported that there, there is a bill to uh, legalise euthanasia and it's going to be brought forward to the Dáil in weeks. The Irish people are going to be given another referendum regarding euthanasia. It's funny how they're bringing out all these referendums for us, but you don't give out the referendum of, you know, the likes of uh, the banking bailout and what will happen with the evictions and what about repossessions. They're not giving us that referendum, just kind of other referendums. Euthanasia, again, it's your own opinion as to how you feel about it. Um, people will have their own opinion on it. Um, you, As you know, people can go over legally to Switzerland and once they're in sound mind, um, they can uh, agree to be um, euthanized. And obviously, if you're suffering from terminal cancer or in severe pain um, and there's no you know, cure, now we know there's cures out there um, or there's no there's ways to go into remission, um, natural you know, healing, uh, the modalities and healing um, ways that you can, you can uh, apply to people. And uh, we've heard it on the show loads of times. So the whole idea of something being terminal, to me, you know, I th- I'm sure there's a way of getting around it. But if there is a case that there's no way that you can fix something, then if a person's in severe pain, then obviously, you know, it's going to be their choice. It kind of makes sense. I mean, we do it for animals, don't we? We put them down, you know, to put them out of their misery. So, you know, I don't see why human beings can't make their own choice in that. But again... We could do it for politicians as well. If oh, definitely, like, yeah. yeah. I couldn't give you a list of politicians that we put on the list there, you know. They'd be kicking and screaming. But there you go. How's your week, Steve? <coughs> yeah, my week's been fine. I, people uh, who have been listening there over the past couple of weeks will know that uh, we lost... A uh, family member lost my father-in-law there uh, a couple of weeks back, and uh, we just uh, we actually had to go uh, during the week to collect his death cert. But we when we when we got there, there was a complication. The death cert wasn't available. Uh, but my wife received something out in the post there today. Uh, not today, sorry, Jordan, I think it was Friday, uh, possibly Thursday, maybe Friday. Uh, and she has to use this information that she was sent in the post to go back in uh, to get the death cert. But you know what, the, what, what they're putting down as the cause of death? Go on. Uh, lung cancer. Right, okay. Yeah, which is, but it wasn't the lung cancer that killed him, because it was pneumonia. And the pneumonia, the, the pneumonia couldn't be, they, they couldn't get, a, get a, a, a handle on the pneumonia. So that turned into sepsis, which, as I've seen through the research, which, as I've seen through the research, can and does happen. Uh, and it's the sepsis that can kill you. So, I, th- I think when I mentioned this to our voice over lady, uh, Mary or Steph, um, she said her father went the same way. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. But it's just, it's just, it's strange that they're saying like that it was lung cancer, but they also said that they they couldn't actually treat the, the lung cancer or any of the cancer for that matter uh, until they got past the infection, which was the sepsis, which was uh, kind of brought on by the pneumonia. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. We're, we're 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 not sure what the next step is. I don't know if anyone else has been through this. Uh, if if you know exactly where we're going to go from here. Um, you know, do we have to kind of question that and raise a raise a ticket and and you know see what what, what can be done? Um, but I suppose at the end of the day, it's not going to bring him back. But uh, yeah, it's just it's it was my first kind of um, experience with you know one of these uh, cause of deaths. Um, the system. The, the system, yeah. Mm. Um, anyway, uh, because of that, we, I've been doing a, a little bit of research, and I do have some paperwork in my pocket. I'm not going to go through it all, because I know we are kind of, it's, it's a packed show this evening. All I, all I will say is um, that the sun is shining now, and everyone in Ireland needs to just get out and be in the sun. Don't don't start putting on this sun cream, because uh, from the, the, there are direct links between sun cream and cancers. Uh, but get out and get about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes of sun every, I don't know, maybe every day or even every couple of hours if you can, because seemingly the benefits of the sunshine, the vitamin D, uh, to the calcium, it's, it's, 
there's just so many benefits it really is I, I will put up a link uh, to some of the information that I that I've got uh, and you can read it at your leisure but yeah we need to be getting out in the sun because some of the some of the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency are probably uh, if I name them all off I say everyone could probably take about I don't know most of them actually you know tiredness sore muscles sore back aches and pains headaches nausea muzzy feeling lethargic to name but a few. Uh, so, see me, it's, it, it can be vitamin C deficiency. We can also get tablets to, uh, well, in the health food shop, you know, kind of uh, supplements. And uh, that can kind of work wonders as well. If you're vegetarian or vegan, it's a little more difficult uh, to get it naturally because, see me, there is a lot of vitamin D in some animals. Uh, but anyway, uh, I will pop a link up in the chat room and we can all, or you can all check that out if you want. Uh, what else? NASA. I watched a video during the week. I don't know if, you, if, if you've seen this, but I've seen a video during the week where uh, I think it was uh, released in 20, 2017, so only last year, and there was a guy and he was being interviewed. He was kind of the voice for NASA uh, for this particular interview, and he was saying that they're working on a lot of different technologies to get them further and further out into space. But he said the 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 only thing, and they want they don't want just probes going out. They actually want to send people. You know, and what they're saying is that the only stumbling block that they have at the moment uh, that they need to overcome is the Van Allen radiation belt. And they're saying once they can get someone through that, a human through that without being killed uh, due to the radiation, then they're kind of, they will come on leaps and bounds. That's kind of where I kind of paused the video and I went, huh? Mm. Did, did he just say we can't? Get through the belt. Rewind that back again. And he says, yeah, up to, up to this point in time, I, we've only been able to send humans into low Earth orbit. Uh, we can't actually send them any further than that because of the Van Allen radiation belt. And he says, if, if we wanted to send a human through the Van Allen radiation belt at the moment, we would need at least six inches, six, not six inches, six feet of lead around uh, whatever the craft may be mm. in order to protect them. And I'm thinking... What was this? What was the the that little thingamajig made of in nineteen six? Was a sixty three aluminium? I'm pretty sure it was aluminium. And I'm thinking, why doesn't he know this? I mean, he doesn't need lead. All he needs is aluminium because it worked in nineteen sixty three. Uh, anyway, you're talking about sixty nine, the flight to the moon. Oh, sixty nine, sixty nine, was yeah, it? 69, okay, so yeah. where am I going with sixty three? Yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, seemingly NASA either have just been caught by the short and curlies, or they've forgotten. The information, or maybe they may, they probably mislaid it or misplaced it. But uh, yeah, it was a, it was an interesting video. Unfortunately, I don't actually have a link to Can it. Can I uh, just add to that? Yes, you may. Um, I do remember seeing an interview uh, a long time ago. Um, what David Wilcox did talk about this, and he said yes, they did go to the moon, but they used ET technology to get through the Van Allen Belt. Mm. Um, but you know, again, it's all speculation at the moment. Um, the Van Allen Belt. Um, is uh, as you say a belt of radiation yeah. and if the Americans got to the moon surely the Russians would have went to the moon as well but they've never been to the moon the Russians maybe mm. because they know that maybe the Americans didn't go to the moon you know I yeah. mean very very quickly you know when Kennedy um, said we're going to have a man on the moon before the end of the decade somebody just put their hands on the head and went oh my god he's gone and said it so they said, right, okay, we've plan A and plan B. Plan A will be, we'll try and get man to the moon. But if we can't get him to the moon, plan B will be, we'll do it in the studio. We'll get them up and over the earth, and then we'll go over to the studio footage. And then, you know, and then that will be it. And they went up in, I think, June or July in 1969, just before the end of the decade, funny enough. Yeah. Um, was, I think there was something about, wasn't there, if we can't make it, if you can't make it, fake, fake it. Fake it. Well, yeah. that's it. Anyway, the last thing I want to mention is, and I thought you actually, I, I actually thought you would have had it on the list because I just thought you would have. Um, but yeah, we had a, an email in during the week about the retirement age. They're increasing the retirement age here in Ireland, uh, so now you can work even longer. It won't be it won't be long before you can actually work till you're a hundred in this country uh, if you live that long. I think it's all about pensions. I don't want to pay out the pensions. However, um, if you don't want to be working till you're seventy or eighty or ninety. Get a get a job in the government or the civil service because you can uh, kick back at the age of fifty. I believe it was fifty in the email uh, with a full pension. So uh, and you'll be well looked after. It'll be a generous pension if you're if you're a government minister. So uh, join, uh, get a job in the government. Do a couple of years there. If you get to even be the T shock uh, over here as well. 
happy days you can retire at probably about 50 uh, years of age and uh, kick back and enjoy the spoils uh, well into old age. Anyway, there we go. That's uh, my week. How's your week? So the slaves can uh, walk till they drop and then the ministers can kick back at 50 and enjoy their massive yeah. pension retirement That's uh, salary. It. That's it. Okay, just a couple of things before we get Randy and Thomas in. Now, actually, you know, I should uh, put the light on here. Um, right, okay. Now, we, I got, um, there was a comment put up on the Facebook page um, during the week, and I just thought we'd read it out because I think it was very important. If we remember a couple of weeks ago, for people who are regular listeners, we had a, a couple on Sid and Soma. And Sid and Soma have written a book called Dress to Kill about the dangers of wearing a, a bra... Uh, for the ladies um, and the cause of breast cancer and um, you can even affect your lymph nodes and stuff like that and it was a great um, great interview that we did with Sid and Somer it was great information and they're trying to get it out there to educate the ladies all about it so um, this comment came in during the week and I have to read it out it's a lady from, called Ali and she sent it over to me and she said on a more serious note I have had swollen lymph nodes in that are more in that in that she's had swollen lymph nodes for more than 20 years baffling doctors as no illness could be found only the symptom having listen, listened to the interview the OAM interview I thought I would give it a go I am happy to say my lymph nodes have reduced dramatically within just a few days so she listened to the show she said right okay I'm going to take off my bath for a few days just to see and what would happen and after 20 years of her having a problem with the lymph nodes and the doctors not knowing what caused and what was causing the problem she said within a couple of days it, the, the lymph nodes reduced dramatically so there's a little bit of evidence I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more out there but there's a little bit of evidence there ladies that you know maybe you should give it a go just see how you get on um, for a few days for a week or two and just see how you get on um, but it's worth it and the last thing on the list some people will know about escrow. I'm sure people have heard escrow. It's very, uh, it's mentioned more in, in America than it is, I think, in Europe. And some people know about escrow and some people don't. But people who don't, uh, just to let you know, I, I dealt with, I used escrow years ago when I was in a corporate company to, to buy something. And basically what escrow is, is just, it's a company that acts as, as a middleman. So if you were buying stuff, say, off eBay or something like that, and you don't want to send the person the money unless you get the item. What escrow do is they're the third party. So what you would do is you'd send the money to escrow. They would hold the money there. And then the person would send you the item. And when you're saying, if you say you're happy with the item, you click the button with escrow and then escrow forward the money on to that person. And it's like having a third party. And I've used escrow before and a lot of people use escrow to buy houses in America and buy cars and all that kind of stuff. So I've set up an escrow account um, just to have a handy for anything that I want to do with because there's so many scam artists out there trying to get sell you fake stuff or you know other scams going on so i thought you know what if people are genuine they won't mind using escrow if they're if they're not genuine then they will try and say oh i'm not interested in that do it western union well western union means that they get the money and they run off and that's it and paypal or ebay well i'm sure they have their own you know issues in themselves but you know escrow i've used before and i know that it worked for me anyway and we were getting a corporate domain name for five grand sterling so it was well worth using escrow to do that and it worked perfectly so for people who don't know escrow go over to escrow.com and check it out have a read go to youtube and and have a look at how it works but it's like somebody holding on to the money and then you get the goods and if you're happy with them then they pay the person there is a fee involved obviously because they have to charge you a fee depending on what you're selling or buying whatever but um check it out anyway see what you think Right, okay, let's bring in our uh, two guests. Now, we have Thomas and Randy on the show tonight. Thomas Williams, as you know, Thomas has been on the show a good few times. Great information. Thomas has his own, his own radio show on Thursday evenings over here. It'd be in Ireland, um, the Truth, Honour and Integrity show. And Randy's been on the show last year. I think Randy came on the show. And he has his own radio show as well called Off Planet Radio. And they uh, both... Uh, Thomas and Randy are very uh, cued into what's going on in the planet and things that are going on. So we're going to be talking about kind of the day-to-day -day stuff, but also for the next six months, because we are in 2018. 
And a lot of people are saying there's a lot of things going on, whether it's energies hitting the planet or whether it's just day-to-day stuff and changes. There's a lot of CEOs, a lot of people resigning all of a sudden. I don't know whether you've seen that on the media, but there's, there seems to be a lot, an awful lot of people resigning or leaving their jobs, you know, high-ranking people. Um, for some reason, maybe does a maybe the fulcrum files which Thomas told us about has something to do with it. But let's find out what uh, what's going on. Good evening, chaps. How are you doing? Hi. Good evening. Hi, guys. Brilliant stuff. Listen, guys, thanks for coming on. Um, I thought it'd be great to have both you on so we can the two of us can have a good chat and just talk about what's going on. And um, before we get into things, um. I mean, I'm sure people, Thomas, know your radio show, but let's just give them uh, some information about your background, Thomas, and then we'll say the, do the same with Randy, and then we'll start getting into talking about some subject matter. Uh, background, uh, knowledge, that I, I don't know where it came from at a young age, experiences at a young age, and a desire to uh, um, make sure that this world is fair and balanced. It didn't appear so that way. Everything appeared to me to be backwards and upside down, left is right, and you name it. And so I launched into what was initially to do with ET research and developed into uh, finance and all all the fields (laughs) that it covers now. And that's kind of where I ended up. And uh, of course now we're involved, involved in the trust and involved in other aspects some of which gets covered in the show, and a lot that doesn't. Yeah, yeah. no, well, it's a, you, you've been doing the show, and it's a great information on the show that you're putting out there um, every Thursday. Um, Randy, tell us about Off Planet Radio and what you've been up to. Okay, so Off Planet Radio is about, um, I guess, nine years old. I have been doing this. This sprung out of, uh, again, experiences in childhood and through life, some of it having to do with... Uh, ETs, UFOs, uh, experiences I had uh, when I was young encountering different, um, let's just say, agency operations. And it kind of dovetailed over in the years since to include research into pretty much everything that has anything to do with the control grid on the planet. Okay. And... um uh, did, did you, well, we've got all your details at the end of the show regarding links and stuff for radio shows. We'll do that. Sure. Is there anything that, the, the information that we just talked about there before we actually uh, uh, get into talking about other things, is there anything that kind of jumped out at you two? I mean, one of the things that we mentioned there was the sealed, sealing the files for 75 years so the people who actually were involved in doing this stuff um, don't get exposed. Uh, Thomas, what's, what, what's your take on that? It's not going to wash. They can they can do whatever they think they can do. The tides changed, and there's too many who know now. There's too many who have been exposed. Um, there's a lot more still to be exposed on various levels, <clears throat> but they all know, and I mean all of them know that that the rise in the public consciousness and awareness of the levels of criminality is increasing by the second and eventually it will tip over into the mainstream as we may call it and they will demand it there's no question of that Uh, it's the same with ET disclosure that was 50 years because they've done a lot of heinous things that's wrapped up in that sort of disclosure uh, and they think, uh, well, we'll all be dead then, so they're not going to lynch us in the streets. Well, no, we, we, we've had enough of your lies. We've had enough of your distortion and distraction of history and who and what we are. Um, we want the truth now. Um, I, you know, the truth's going to be painful and much of it you're not going to like. It's as simple as that. Mm. But we have, we have to. Uh, step over the threshold if, if we're going to go forward with, with, and stand in truth it has to come out now and so they can wrap stuff up but we have files that knows who's done what so they can hide whatever they like it won't wash it would be good to kind of get it out into the public Randy what's your take on that about the, the sealed documents as far as the specific documents you're talking about, I'm not aware of that. What I'll address here is that we're already seeing 
frankly, a bunch of them throwing each other, other under the bus. Uh, we just had two high-profile celebrity suicides here in the United States this week. Both seem to be leading back in different steps towards what is known as uh, Pedogate, the Pizzagate scandal, the Harvey Weinstein ongoing investigation, which is a, which is a grand jury investigation. And um, this is all leaking. And I think what you're going to see increasingly is the pressure being put upon uh, the actors and on the prosecutors themselves to bring this to uh, a greater disclosure. Obviously, the high level wins are not being ratted out yet. People like Harvey Weinstein, a prominent film producer and obviously a celebrity, is, by my estimation, one of the lower level level operatives in terms of um, what goes to the very top of this world system. Uh, one of the things that I've said in, for years, going back on my show, is that pedophilia is the currency of power, and that that currency is now being short-circuited by the disclosures that are coming out. So they can seal whatever documents they have, but the truth of the matter is they're not going to be able to stop the insiders from hemorrhaging information leading to convictions. And obviously, talking about Harvey Weinstein and the whole Hollywood casting couch, I mean, everybody, the world and his wife knew about this open secret that there is a, some kind of casting couch that does go on, go on in Hollywood. And there's what I find is kind of a hypocrisy on some of the stars is that some of them are only coming out now when they have their stardom, why didn't they do it? Why didn't they come out when they were going in for the, the casting couch 10 or 20 years ago? Why are they only coming out now? Why didn't they something say something then? Because they, ho they operate from a shallow, low vibrational nature. That's why. They, they sell, sell the soul out to the devil. And I don't mean that's not, I mean that literally, not figuratively. Mm. For fame and fortune, it's the ego based, and, and, and many people have the, the what is essentially a disease of an uh, unbalanced ego, and they'll play on that. And, and they, you want fame? Well, here's your contract. Mm. Well, uh, I don't really want to sacrifice kids. No, you sign the contract, and you're going. And and, and this is what they do. But th there's a weakness in the individual to begin with. To take the seducement and that's what we have to stop yeah it's going to be a, an uphill struggle on that one randy what's your take on the whole hollywood casting couch uh, scenario it's an old institution this is the way hollywood's run from the very beginning hollywood operates off of two standards the standards inside the industry and the standards uh by which the rest of the public are expected to believe Hollywood operates. It's, it's, it's an industry of perception management. So Hollywood itself presents this, this imagery of uh, a, a, an industry that is forward-looking, that has produced, quote, good, wholesome family entertainment, unquote. And then um, in the background, what you find out is scumbags and lizards are running the whole thing. So there really is a, a, a deep, dark system in Hollywood that runs off of dark occult forces. These people literally do rituals. They are satanic, luciferic in nature. And most of what they are doing is programming and mind control in the public. So for the most part, what Hollywood says it does and how it operates behind the scenes. And this is well known by insiders. I have contacts in Hollywood. I know uh, one actress who is currently um, an activist inside the Middle East who left the film industry and she has reported being uh, molested repeatedly as part of her career. So this is just part of the currency. Again, like pedophilia, sexual energy is a transference of power. Mm. Yeah. Um, one thing that I remember, Steve, I think you looked into this, was the subliminal messaging in the Walt Disney uh, movies 
Oh, it's rife. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. You, you, yeah. Looked, you looked into that, didn't you? Like, yeah. Well, as, as, as much as anyone else would have looked into it, yeah. I mean, but it's it's absolutely rife. I mean, when you go through certain films, you, you see it, it's, it's there. Uh, okay, it, it's not... Not You know the way sometimes you watch a film mm. and there are certain jokes in it. The mm. kids don't get it, but the adults do. And we mm. kind of go, hmm, mm-hmm, we know what they mean. Yeah. Well, it's the same with like sub, uh, subliminal, mes- subliminal messaging. There's a lot of phallic, phallic symbols in a lot of Disney videos. Mm. You know, mm. and, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure the two boys, the, the, the Randy and, and Thomas, are, are well well aware of it as well. But yeah, it's it's there. And uh, for, I mean, is it to desexualize children? You know, it, it's like that. You know, the advert. I don't know whether you guys are getting it over in the in the states, but over here, who's the girl who was in that band that was um, the the color girl who was going out with uh, Lewis, the, the racing driver? She does the advert with the Muller Rice. Stuff. It could be anybody. I don't oh, know. She's a famous. I'm not too sure. She's a famous sure singer. Though. Somebody will give us the give us the name on the chat. She's a famous singer. She was in a girl band, and um, she's on the. She does. Uh, she does some yogurt advert anyway. And um, the yogurt advert at the end of it, she always has this. Like she she falls over and there's a giggle and there's a part of the the yogurt is on the tip of her nose, right? Okay. Now. I think that's subliminal advertising. I think that's subliminal and saying something more in a sexual nature. Yeah, yeah well, it's all, it's like Vanley's just described. It's, it's Hall of Mirrors on a vast scale. It, and it doesn't just apply to Hollywood, it applies to everyday life. Back the banking's a Hall of Mirrors, or it was, it won't be soon. Uh, and, and it's all the illusion, the perception of what's real and what's not. Mm. Uh, and it's become that distorted now that no one really knows what's real, what's proof, what's true, or what or anything. And you, you can't, yeah, the Pussycat Dolls. Thanks, there, uh, Dougie. Well done. The girl who's the lead singer in the Pussycat Dolls. I totally agree, Thomas, because as you said, people will put up a photo or a video of maybe I don't know, look at the CT craft, and the first thing we think of is oh, it's CGI. Now it might not be CGI, but the technology is so good these days that people will just pass it off as CGI. So I don't know what is real and what's fake, and that's the trouble. We don't know what to believe. No. No. Uh, well, it's like the moon. They were talking about uh, travelling to and from the moon. It's yes. kind, of a, uh, kind of irrelevant whether they did or they, or they didn't, in essence. Uh, we know they're going in uh, the out. We know they've got uh, technology that's at least a thousand years ahead. Um... And who's to say that the moon is not low Earth orbit? Exactly, exactly, Thomas. That's that's what I think too. Moreover, what is space? When yeah. you start to examine it, um, we're led to believe many things about the construct we live on that aren't supported by the actual physical evidence. I, we have had the same blue ball spinning in space picture from NASA for almost fifty years now. Yeah. And that's the only, we're not getting data that supports the, the scientific supposition that we live on a spinning ball in a galaxy, in a cosmos, in a universe, when in fact the greater truth may be that the construct that we live on, the Earth itself, is not what we've been told it is. Yeah, well, to, to a couple of things that I've come across on that, and just kind of pointing out these things, there's a photo, the famous photo of Neil Armstrong coming down the ladder to step on the moon. Now, you have to ask yourself, who took the photo if he's the first man on the moon? Who set up the oh, camera? Stanley Kubrick. Really? Yeah, yeah. Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> and then the other, thing, well, the, the other thing that John Irwin said, which he kind of questioned as well, is right, if the moon is supposed to be a gravitational influence on the Earth, which creates air tides going in and out, how come the satellites that are going around the Earth are not affected by that gravitational pull also? Because, if, because the moon's not. That's why. Um, it's just not. And... Um, as Randy says, uh, what is space? You know, who's to say um, everything else is upside down? Who's to say um, that space is not uh, not below? It's the same concept. Yeah. You have the same force of gravity going underneath the ocean as you do in, in the sea, uh, in the sky. Mm. We, yeah, we've advanced, on, on our show, we've advanced the concept based on 
both uh, unconfirmed intelligence and anecdotal evidence from people who are inside government projects that many of the portals, obviously there's many portals that exist, ley lines, mountains, uh, subterranean portals, and suboceanic portals. And if you uh, look interestingly enough, you find that we may have a construct in which space itself is actually a confluence suboceanic. In other words, the actual, quote, space missions are being conducted under the waters at depths that we can't even, to use the pun, fathom. Um, We're told that uh, we're, we're told we can only sustain depths of, what, five miles underwater. Uh, well, those same suppositions about what sits under the oceans or what sits inside of the Earth construct itself can be extended to include what we call space. It's just a mind exercise, but if you think about it, um, you come to realize that maybe our perception of space, where it is, what it constitutes, and even what this 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 uh, construct we live upon is, can be challenged just by doing the thought exercises. Because when we see rockets going off from Oak oh, Cape Canaveral, those rockets are not going straight up anyway. And in fact, we have no proof whatsoever that those those rockets this aircraft have ever left Earth's um, lower atmospheres. No. Yeah. No, there's no, no definitive proof either, either no way. Definitive. It's just, yeah. it's just a- assumed it is. And there's a, a lot of assumptions. I remember doing, uh, I think people thought it was a bit of a silly question, but does Australia exist? Well, if you haven't been there, how do you know? No, we just assume, and, and that's part of the problem. So, as you mentioned before, if we can only go five miles down in the ocean, we can only go five miles up in space. It's the same. As above, density. so below. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John, yeah, so it's the same concept. Yeah. John, John yeah. Irwin um, said to us as well. He's a pilot. He's a private pilot, and he his belief system is that air bodies vibrate with the same frequency as the air, the human frequency. And he said it's an impossibility that we can get away from the Earth and go to Mars. This is his opinion based on his research, that because air bodies are fundamentally on the same frequency with the Earth, that if we move away from that frequency, we'll just die. So that all the talk of outer space and Mars and all is all kind of a fallacy. Now, there's no reason to say that if we're a thousand years advanced in technology, that they have overcome that limitation and this is one thing i said to john maybe they've overcome the limitation maybe they have some chamber or some you know like with aircrafts who travel at speed if you have no inertia it means that you can travel as fast as you can but you won't feel the speed and there'll be no g-force so maybe they have the technology as well to get the human body to vibrate in the same frequency or fake frequency like the human frequency so they can travel to other planets i don't know whether if you guys have heard Uh, anything contrary to that I wouldn't agree with that statement. Um, I can understand uh, where it comes from. But the reality is none of us came from here either. Mm. Or, or there's very few that came from here. Most, as I understand, are refugees from other places. So why? how can we be here? And, um, you know, um, it, it's, if you uh, follow the narrative... Uh, from what I understand, they were on Mars before Kennedy made that speech. Uh, there's various ways, there's various portals, various gateways, um, a lot of which that have now been shut down because of the uh, interference in the war going on. But, you know, it's uh, you can't explain it in in the modern day scientific way because they can't grasp it because they're, they're applying... 3D science, it doesn't work. Exactly. You, know, it, you can't apply something outside of something else in, in a 3D model and they're, and they're being forced, you know, there's, there's some people who come out and, and, and manage to get information out of how you do this and how you do that mm. and largely the, the, in the past they've been killed but 
uh, too much of science is based on a 3D model. It's and, like it's, and, and life doesn't work that way. It's like the argument um, where you see the scientists being interviewed and they say um, about, uh, do you think there's life on other planets? And they said, oh, well, they wouldn't be able to travel because it's too far, you know, from one planet to another. And you think... That's 3D thinking. You've obviously never heard of wormholes and advanced technology. Um, but listen, I know we're going to have a lot of questions coming in in the chat room and we're going to have a lot of subjects we're going to be talking about and we want to get through. So we, we'll, we'll probably be jumping back and forward. But I want to move on to kind of the next subject uh, of things that are happening uh, now. And I'll pass this over to Randy and get Randy to kick it off. Randy, mass um, a lot of people on mass, a lot of corporate company um, CEOs and people of that ilk are all of a sudden walking away. You hear from Google, you hear from um, Microsoft and various other companies and even in the military, people are stepping down all of a sudden to spend time with the family and all that. Um, what's your take on that? Well, I think that dates from stories that came out close to the end of last year. There was a list that circulated of CEOs that um, Eric Schmidt from Google, there was a high-ranking profile of other CEOs who had stepped down. The, my, my supposition is that the liabilities have gotten too steep in, in, in the corporate world, that a lot of these guys are deeply embedded into the, the money system, which is collapsing. And in some cases, I think they left largely to avoid prosecution for liabilities incurred by the corporations that they were the heads of at the time. Okay, Thomas? Um, the tides changed, that's why. The frequencies have changed, the energies have changed, and the people are changing. Uh, not as quickly as we'd all like, and I do get that. But their time, their time of that of playing that game ended in 2012. It was up. Um, it's our time. Uh, well, we ha it's not necessarily our time. I'll rephrase that. We have an opportunity to create our time and be a, 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 an operate in a better way. And you know, this is why the alternative media is growing, um, and why more and more people are stepping out of the system and going. This is not right. It's just not right. They've lied to us left, right, and centre. Um, with the um, data stream that we have available, uh, not only uh, from the trust but uh, others now, uh, and the exposure is being done on record levels, whereby I uh, mentioned one item l last year where they tried to hack into one of the systems and it unloaded 80,000 pages of um, criminality on various people and all the proof and all the documents. Well, that's been done on a massive scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's changed the narrative. Uh, and because the, the top structure is no longer in place, it's filtering down. And then, of course, they got the message that the Illuminati... Or what the former Illuminati, they're going to wipe them out because they're, they're now a liability. Because they're just pawns as well. It's the order that must be saved. Well, the order's not going to survive. Well, funny, you should, what you said there at the start of, of your, uh, your comment there, um, and it, it's something that I said we will talk about uh, when we go live on the show, and I'll, I'll pass it off to Randy and then you, you can jump in, Thomas. Um, it's basically got to do with, myself and Steve have been running OEM for eight years, and what we talked about was in that eight-year period, or in the period that you guys have been doing what you're doing, have you seen an increase in people waking up and questioning the system? Randy, you've been doing your show a long time. In that time, can you look back and say, wow, what a difference in uh, the perception of people and their awareness of what's going on? Or do you feel we're still struggling to get there? No, there's been an uptick. It's been increasing and I think Thomas hit the, the golden number there, which was around 2012, where we began to see a, a bit of fruition of the work that was going forward. Um, what I see isn't so much the barometer I use to gauge my listening audience, the social media, or any of the things that are apparent on our level, 
But I look at the man in the street and the conversations I have with people now, I couldn't have had with them uh, six years ago. Um, I now see the, the narrative, the, the, the dominant narrative being challenged even by common people. They've now lived through having their wallets and checkbooks and bank accounts raped by the bankers in plain view of everybody. They've watched as a mockery has been made of justice repeatedly in the courts over high-level court decisions. They're watching as the culture erodes. They're watching as it's very clear that the money system itself is unstable. Uh, I just had somebody recently tell me, a man who is very frugal, who has worked his whole life, and he said when he went to his um, uh, advisor over his retirement account, the guy told him, plan on working another 20 years. Um, that's actually what is going on, is people are feeling it in their pocketbooks. And the effect of what we do in alternative media is a wave effect. It, it It's not really trickled down so much as, we stirred the waves of consciousness in such a way that it is now rippling out in greater and greater waves. If you think about the, the old ripple effect of dropping a pebble in water and watching it reverberate, those distant reverberations now are, are what is hitting the average everyday person. So the conscious, awake and aware people inside of the online alternative communities were the means to reverberate these changes out. And it's subliminal in some ways and it's specific in others. But yes, there's been an uptick and I think I feel very strongly that what we do has an effect. Whether anybody's ever heard my show or Thomas's or yours, what we're doing is we're putting it out there into the airwaves. Okay. Thomas? Yeah. Uh, it's had a massive effect. Uh, a lot. I think... Um, there's been that much information that people forget, and sometimes I, what I like to do is, is a review on, on our shows to just get people to take stock, because it's, it's always when's it coming, when's it coming, uh, and the reality is, is most of it's already arrived, it's already happened. You, you talk of disclosure, we've had disclosure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so we tend to forget that all oh, we want extra layers of proof and extra layers of truth. Well, we've already had it. It's what it's what we do with the next stage. And um, from uh, our show's point of view, what I'm seeing is a change, an inner change, not the external change, but that's the illusion. It's the inner change that's important from inside yourself. So I'm seeing uh, people uh, dealing with the shadow sides, doing their inner work improving on a spiritual level which is increasing the vibration and the consciousness and it's being uh, duplicated by the source energies that's coming in and increasing uh, amounts and yeah. so there is now a narrative where you can uh, you know as long as you don't jump in with the ET story because that's still a, um, a no-no for many but there is a, a a platform to this to reach across the bridge to the ones who, not that they didn't know, just couldn't face it. Well, one and one that of, now starts to face it. Yeah, one of the things that we talked about before we went live, um, we we have loads of questions, so we will go over there in a minute. With, we have one or two subjects to cover, but one of the things that we mentioned, Thomas, and I think we have to agree on this: that ignorance is now a choice. The, all yeah. the information is out there, but the trouble is there are people in this bubble. And our bubble is, they go to work, they come home, they watch EastEnders, Carnation Street, they have the dinner, they go to bed, they wake up, and that's their life. And the, the alternative media does not impact in their life, because that's their bubble, that's, that's what's going on. And the thing is, as we said, it's very hard to try and penetrate that bubble, because that's their harmony, that's, their, that's what they used to. And one of the things that needs to happen, as we talked about, was... A lot of the time to wake people up, it's either a medical problem or it's a, an eviction, a repossession, a financial problem or something happening that kind of triggers it and then that deharmonizes them and then they start looking into this. 
Um, but for some people, they're still in their bubble now today. So even though all the information's out there, they, they'll still ask you for disclosure. Or they'll still say, well, I don't believe that. That's all a conspiracy theory. It's how to crack that bubble. Um, because if they're just watching the mainstream media, they come home, have the dinner, they watch the mainstream media, believe the propaganda, go to bed and all that kind of stuff then trying to crack that bubble is going to be very hard. And the only way we can do it is to really to get something in front of them on the mainstream media or something like that, where they are watching the TV and then all this information starts coming out. But if the bubble is... Uh, I'll just say one one thing quick and I'll stand it over to Randy. If the bubble is such a harmonic, happy uh, lifestyle as portrayed, why is so many people unhappy? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, I will. I will just add this. Uh, as far as ET disclosure goes, it's kind of the gold standard for do not touch right now. But what we're actually seeing is that that has been migrating out into the consciousness as well, even and even since the seventies. I mean. You there, Andy? It's the seventies by Spielberg yeah. and other film producers. Yeah, that was the key for the ET, uh, the Close Encounters movie. Close think, Encounters. It? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It it triggered many people. Yeah, sorry, Randy, we lost you there for a split second. So do you just want to okay. repeat what you said there? I don't know whether people are, you know, paying silly buggers, but uh, if you want to just okay. uh, say are, that again. Are you hearing? Are you hearing me now? Yeah, I am. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. So to recap, real quick. We've had disclosure since the 70s, effectively through the film industry, who began to demonstrate in, you know, ways that were palpable to the public, the presence of extraterrestrials, as we'll call them that. Um, I'm presently being told, made a major educational institute here in the eastern United States, has access to documents that detail the activities of interactions between ETs and our own government going back over 70 years, and that those documents are in the hands of, of, of these academicians who are laboring now to figure out how to leak this over a very long period of time to the general public to prevent the kind of cultural shock that would occur. But the astute watcher understands that there are literally tens of thousands of witnesses every day to what goes on in the, in the sky above us, uh, the Star Wars, the crafts coming in, and that um, there is, in fact, what you might call a secret space program that's getting harder and harder to hide at this time. So that's a secret space pro program that's being talked about by certain high-profile celebrities on the Internet. It's the secret space program that has been conducted probably yeah. since the beginning of the last century. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot we don't know, and it goes way back, um, way uh, past the 60s and probably into the 20s, 30s. Uh, well, when, I need yeah. to stress, and I, and I need to stress, this type of information to be brought out in a haphazard manner serves no one because, uh, again, you have a shock value to this. Our reality, once that's leaked, everything else collapses. Yeah. And you will, in fact, uh, I was told by one person, it was a bit of hyperbole, but he said, you know, we reveal this stuff, everything collapses overnight, and it goes cannibal. And I understand that. I understand that the, the sense that this kind of information being leaked to the public in a haphazard manner would be disruptive. Mm. Well, look around you right now at what is occurring that's disruptive. That actually is disclosure. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I heard was they, they have to get the conscious level of the planet to about 85%. And when they come out and say stuff, people go, yeah, we knew about that. And then society carries on. At the moment, we're obviously not there. And it would have a major effect on society. It would collapse so many religions and maybe the financial system and everything else. So that makes sense not to do that. And I can see that not until people are ready, because there's people still not ready, still believe we're the only planet with life on it. I mean, I can't believe there's people out there like that, but there is. 
Before we go off to the questions, though, there's one more subject that I, w- I want to bring in. We said we'd talk about. We have loads of questions coming in. Steve's going to be shooting them off over at you in a few minutes. But the one thing, one subject we want to talk about, uh, we said we'd talk about, Thomas, I'll start this off with you, is the fact that everything is being reduced. Everything yeah. that we're buying, what we're dealing with, and the products we're using, is all about reduction being reduced. Do you want to kick yeah. us off with that, Thomas? Yeah, you know, it's a... Um, it's something I, I was uh, going to approach in the next show uh, about the reduction, and it, it goes way back. You know, we uh, humans were bigger, they were stronger, uh, they had bigger brains, and we got reduced. The trees um, were bigger, and they got reduced, and uh, the fruits um, had a lot more in it, and they got reduced, and then we could get into Monsanto where they reduced it again. And then you go uh, in, into uh, finance, and your spending power has been drastically reduced. Your lifestyle has been reduced. Your vacation time has been reduced, and it just goes on and on and on. And then the biggest thing over the last, uh, uh, the two biggest things is the reduction, not the increase, the reduction in technology. As we're still driving around in, and in flying in planes uh, and trains in a hundred year old technology. It's outdated. And the biggest one is the reduction in education and learning because mm. we've gone drastically backward. You know, there was kids that used to live, um, leave school at 13 who, who would bamboozle us in uh, present day, most of us. When they left school at 13, now they're staying on until 18 and 21 and still not learning what that kid knew at age 8 or 9. That's a, re- a massive reduction, and that's why... Well, you can go back... You that you can... I'm sorry. No, no, carry on. I finished. Now, you could go back in history and look at the standard tests that were being administered in the late 19th century t- to kids going to one-room rural schoolhouses. Most of us today can't even do the basic mathematics that were embodied in those tests then. Yeah. 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 I remember seeing a Wisconsin one and I answered five yes. out of what, 20. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, all right, there was some terms I didn't understand in uh, modern day bushels and stuff like that. But, you know, um, it, it, I gave it to a school teacher and she got zero. And so what chance did the kids have? And it's not the teacher's fault. They're, they're being asked to deliver basically BS and rubbish and all to do with the uh, um, hive mind. Let's follow follow this. We'll, we'll tell you this is A, B, and C. Don't dare question what's D, E, and F. No, critical thinking gone. And everything, uh, whether it's to do with the, the corporate structure, it's reducing to the bottom end. You buy a product. A TV used to last 10, 15 years. Now you're lucky if it lasts 10 to 15 months. It's reduction upon reduction upon reduction, and we have to stop it. It's. Uh, we were talking about this just before we went live. Um, I recently had to get a, a new dish, this dish washer, and uh, my last one lasted about I think it was fifteen, twenty years or something. We had a long and time. Then he had to retire because he was too old at dishwasher. <laughs> so we had to retire the dishwasher, and it's just broke down six months. Six months we've had it, and it's broke down already. Um, and we had to uh, get the engineer to fix it. Look, he was under warranty. And it's all this built-in redundancy in proc- products because at the end of the day, they don't make money if something's going to last. They need to turn it around. And also, one of the things that are quite obvious to everybody who buys printer ink, when you buy printer <laughs> ink, I mean, I know it's trivial, but I mean, the ink used to get loads of ink in the cartridges years ago, and now you get very, very little, and you're paying a fortune for it. So all these things are changing and um, and it's just part of the system. The whole scarcity, you know, if it's scarce, they can charge you more money. Because if it's abundant, then obviously they don't, uh, they won't get the money. So they can put, they can put up the profit on scarcity. And um, and we just have to be aware that all has to be changed, and we have to move that around. Now I'm going to go off to the questions. We've loads of questions that are come on, come in. And what we're going to try and do, guys, is we're going to quick fire them over to you. And if you can kind of keep the answers fairly short, because we want to kind of get through them all as much as we can. Um, and I know it's hard because something sometimes there's a subject that might 
need a big explanation, but we'll try and keep it short if we can. Steve, over to you. Take it away. Yes, and uh, just talking about your printers and all, uh, a lot of the new printer inks, uh, people will notice, have a little chip on them, and those chips are be- basically built in obsolescence. Uh, they will let your pr- let that ink print so many times, and then it just tells it tells it your printer, nope, that's it, you're done. And uh, uh, people, there was actually a chap, and we I think we spoke about this last year. A chap, uh, he disassembled the printer. The printer stopped working. He couldn't get it to work. He disassembled it. He got a program. I don't know where he got the program from, but he was able to access like deep down into the printer. He found that there was a chip in there, and he called it the built-in obsolescence. He was able to reprogram this chip, and the printer sprung to life. And he said, that this is the same in all new uh, techno- technological devices. And he said, it's, it's so small, like he said, but it's in there, and after a, a predetermined time, your device will stop working for no apparent reason, and you'll bring it to an engineer, and the engineer will say, Ash, you may as well just get a new one. Yeah. And that's the end of the story. Yeah. Anyway, okay, we're going to go to the questions. Um, oh, sorry, I did have one more comment to say. Uh, you were saying about people watching Coronation Street and EastEnders, and they're all in, in their own little bubbles, uh, but we need to have stuff on mainstream. Unfortunately, I, well, I agree with you, but unfortunately, those people who are wrapped up, uh, I mean, back in the day when we had maybe six or seven channels, you know, maybe you might be able to get something through to them, but with over a thousand TV channels nowadays and all different, you know, Netflix and all this, people see something coming on that challenges or, or questions their, their belief system, they just, just start the channel surf. Mm. So, uh, I don't know. But even, again, it goes back to what, what Thomas says. It's, people have to change. People and have to change, change The change is to challenge, as we say, the fluid belief system. They have to challenge their belief system. Everybody who listens to this show needs to say, is there anything that I believe that I'm not prepared to challenge? And that's the thing you have to challenge. That's the way, that's how you grow. You will grow by challenging your belief system. Some people, part of the belief system is flexible and other parts are, oh no, no, that's in stone. I'm not going to change that. That's what I believe. Well, that thing that's in stone is the thing you should challenge because that's the only way you're going to grow. Well, the overall system, the cabal's changed because it's not, it's, it's not the uh, beer moth it once was. Mm. It's now uh, literally on its knees. So they've changed. That's it. You know, all the puppets have all stepped down. So they've changed. Mm. Now it's up to us. Because if we don't like politics and we don't like government, then we have a responsibility as people to step into those roles. Not within a deep mm. state system, but that, that nonsense has to go. Well, that's not government. That's not government. Well, this, we have to step into the roles. This goes back to what we said um, earlier on, Thomas. Is, you know, myself and Steve put out the fact that we said we'd help anybody if they want to learn how to set up a radio station we'd be more than happy to help them and give them advice and tell them what to do and everything else and we put it out there to try and because if we have more radio stations wherever they are then we can get more people broadcasting more people putting out the truth or putting out the information and exposing things and it'd be fantastic it's not about we're not concerned about competition or anything else Jason I mean if we were worried about competition we wouldn't have you and Randy on because you have your own shows so we're not we're not worried about that we like having people like you guys on uh, other radio show hosts because we learn so much from each other and we put it out there and said we said if anybody is interested in setting up their own radio show we can help them and guide them and, and show them what to do and we had two people one from Canada and another lady from Ireland who was waiting to get money to get the equipment and we just kind of thought well what what can we do what else can we do you know it'd be great to see more radio shows and exposing you know and it's it doesn't cost that much to set it up that's the thing I think people think that it's a massive expense it's highly technical it's not, and if we're more than happy to help people and hold a hand and Skype with them and tell them what they need and show them how to do it. So if there's people listening to the show and want to set up their own radio show and go and do your own thing, then we're more than happy to help. There's no problem there. Sorry, I'm sidetracking, but yeah. I think that's important to say. No, that's okay. Um, yeah. Right, Steve, off to you. Okay. Uh, this is from Chris, and it's for Thomas. He says, uh, Hi, Steve. A few months ago, when Thomas and a lady from the Trust were on the show, she made a prediction about an announcement informing us of an international rail link to Ireland. Any update? Uh, not yet. Um, this, we're dealing with essentially 489 different aspects of life. The external version of what's going on is not as um, prolific as the internal version of what's really going on. It's more the top-end internal 
uh, fixing that is required that sets the platform up for everything to filter down into uh, everyday lives. So that's kind of what's going on now. Okay. Um, there was a kind of a follow-up question there from that. Um, and yeah, it was basically, it was from Liam. Uh, Liam texted us in. Thanks, Liam. And he also wondered, in relation to the foundation, why would the trust give money to governments uh, in the knowledge that the governments are most likely corrupt and would generally probably not pass it on to the people who need it in the first place? The reality is uh, no government has got any funds. And uh, we were aware before the, the uh, firewalls went in uh, recently that they would take some of it out. They will. They will leave some of it in. They have to to keep that system, the, the mirror system, uh, operating where they uh, push the uh, politicians forward as the be all and end all when they're, they're actually uh, as irrelevant in their eyes uh, as we are. And so the, there was 700 uh, billion transferred over on the Rothschilds and NATO and certain other uh, clans took 400 billion and left 300 billion uh, give or take, which is just enough to operate the government through to September. Next time, that won't be happening. You know, uh, there's a lot of fear going on in governments. They know the truth now. All of them we've spoken to, all of them, um, Kim has. And uh, it needs uh, continents to get together. It needs countries to get together. Because if you put up a uh, combined front, they will collapse very, very quickly now. And that's all it takes, people standing up, whether that's uh, people who listen to this show or whether it's government people or whether it's banking people. You ha We have a different way of operating that's fair and beneficial to all, not just them, uh, because ultimately their system has completely collapsed. And Otherwise, that's it. And has, yeah. just out of curiosity, I mean, uh, has Kim been in contact or the Foundation been in contact with the Irish government also? Um, I don't know all, all the individuals. Sometimes uh, she may mention, and, and there's times when I, I don't mention which ones we've been spoken to. Yeah. But, but, you know, we've pretty much gone through all of them. Uh, obviously, over when the, the sovereignty was uh, becoming, uh, uh, was made an issue, but the things have transcended that now. Um, that was what the Kingdom of Manor should have been doing, uh, that work, and we found out that they weren't. And so Kim can only do so much, and the team can only do so much. And uh, you're working around clowns and working around uh, governments who uh, are too frightened of their own shadow, never mind anything yeah. else. No, because it'd, be so it'd be very interesting just, you know, if we knew that the, the foundation had been in contact with the Irish government, uh, it would be interesting just, you know, to sit back and kind of go, OK, we now know that they've been in contact and just sit back and watch what happens. See if there are any changes or if anyone, uh, you know, exits the government. Can I, can I just add to that? Would it be fair to say, Thomas and Randy, that if anybody from the government or from maybe the uh, judicial system or the, the police or um, in politics in general, that if they get to listen to this show to say that if they are in any way dirty or corrupt, that it will catch up with them and they will be exposed and found out. They all know that now. Mm. There's, there's, no, no, there's no illusion anymore. They all know we're coming. Right, okay. There's too many files gone out. Too many people, uh, all avenues of government and, and uh, ambassadors have all seen their files. So they know, they know the Rothschilds are lying through the teeth, but, the, but the, you know, they send uh, jackbooted thugs into certain countries that are going to um, uh, house the trust funds and transfer them properly. And the IMF send goons in uh, and paramilitaries to... Uh, Take the bank down. This is what's going on. Mm. But he can't do it forever. We we can play the long game. I know people don't want to hear that, but we can play the long game. They can't because they've got nothing left. Mm. It's the Ouroboros. They've eaten their own tail on all levels for far too much. Okay. For far too long. And uh, Randy, what's your take on things? <clears throat> I can't speak specifically to activities around the trust, 
Thomas has reported on that. My intel indicates that there are a series of introductions of disruptive technology that will occur, and those will supplant the current power structure incrementally so that effectively, and I'll focus on the one thing that I have been constantly in contact about, and that zero-point energy you would probably know as cold fusion or LENR, is that that is in high-level development now. Now It has been funded. There are currently three companies developing different types of LENR devices, and those devices are under the custodialship of, um, interestingly enough, the native people here in the United States right now, where it has been entrusted. And one of the leaders of the um, native people is currently chaired at MIT, in Boston, and there are active plans to incrementally roll out zero-point energy. That will disrupt the power structure in and of itself. It's not the only innovation, obviously, but it's so disruptive that it will create waves within industry, and it will also encounter current waves, um, d- disrupt the consumer process in ways where we will become we will move from being a consumer society, a repugnant term. We are not consumers. We all create. We will become creators. Uh, yeah. The technology now, 3D printing, which what you see in front of you is 3D printing is crude. It's at a much higher level. The free energy that, that we hope will be released incrementally over possibly the next 18 months. And the custodialship of native peoples who should be the first to benefit because of the fact that they are the most deprived. So those will begin to disrupt the corridors of power even more in ways that will be more readily accessible to the average person. Yeah. Okay, well, that that would be brilliant. Zero-point energy, getting free energy out there. That's uh, that's definitely uh, something uh, to look forward to. Steve, over to you. Yeah, Randy, just throw this one at you. Uh, Shane is wondering, can you ask... Uh, about CERN, what are they trying? What are they trying to do? Open a porthole? Mm. C- CERN, CERN is many things. It, are they opening portals? They're they're doing it. They're not doing it with great elegance. Let's put it that way. They're also highly curtailed right now. So I, I have less concern about CERN in terms of opening portals and the fact that, that they've damaged the, or attempted to damage the geomagnetic structures of the inner Earth. That's just my Piker's view of that. Yeah. Do you want to add to that, Thomas? Uh, my opinion, uh, saying for its higher purpose, uh, ended in August of 2015. And uh, they can spit out um, that this is working and that's working. Uh, we know difference. It's not. And that's why eventually over time you just see things phase out. No one mentions it anymore. And then yeah. people remember. And saying, which was uh, like Jade Helm and all the other memes that came forward, Nibiru, it just phases out because uh, too many people go, what a pile of rubbish that is. And uh, because I was in, uh, kind of involved in uh, what took place with CERN, we, we knew back in August of 2015 it was finished for the main purpose. And they can just play games with it, uh, God particles and all that. Um, <laughs> and what CERN to... has largely been is a sinkhole for a lot of, again, missing money. Uh, some of the money that's disappeared through different military projects, scientific grants, and things like that. CERN has been a pass-through system for cash that's largely gone out into the cabal's endless efforts uh, to wage war on the people. It's basically a military project. Yeah. So they're laundering the money through CERN, obviously. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, it costs about, uh, I think it was 18, 20 billion. And, and they threatened Japan in uh, 2011 to build a bigger one because uh, the one that they had 
even with the satellite ones, was it's not just the one in Switzerland, the satellite ones, it wasn't big enough. And uh, the Japanese refused to fund it. And you saw what happened on March the 11th that year. So here's the, fa- here's the big fallacy in terms of that particular field of science. It is the same field of science that gave us internal combustion engine, rocketry, explosives, A-bombs, and all the other forceful collisions of particles to create a field of science that was destructive. This yeah. field of science has dominated world history now for over a 100 years, and it is archaic, it is outmoded. We don't need it. We live in a field of constant low-level energy which can be tapped into. That's the whole point of using a process such as LENR and some other processes as well. We're living in the Stone Age right now technologically in terms of using explosive power, colliding particles, and, and smashing things in order to gain energy. We expend more energy than we ultimately gain from it. That's the point of zero, zero point energy. So the point of this isn't to introduce some nifty little box that powers your house. It's to introduce a mindset about science and where we occupy space as a continuous creative source, both within ourselves and within this world that we occupy. The one thing, yeah. uh, the one statement that I like that's in uh, Jurassic Park, the movie, is when the, the scientist chap um, turns around and he says, they were so busy doing it, they didn't ask themselves, should we do it? Yeah. Um, so I think they were so busy making the A-bomb and all this technology, they didn't say, well, should we really be doing it? And what's the, what's the effect of it this going to be uh, on the on the planet? And everything else. So I think there's a little bit of that. I think they, again, maybe it's it's a case of the Atlantis side of things. They were like children playing with guns, and they had the technology, and they just couldn't control it or manage it, or you know, they went kind of mad with it, and hence what happened with Atlantis. But uh, okay, we go back off to the questions there, Steve. Yeah, just a question just popped into my mind here. With all the technology that we have today, and and you you have said that. Um, kind of everything has been reduced and we're not really moving forward, we're kind of going backwards. Um, does that mean that we're, you know, everything that's kind of already been, in, or everything that ha- that can be invented has been invented? Are we not going to see any more kind of leaps and bounds going forward? Because we already know that, I think it's every two, is it every two or every three years they say that the, the speed of computers uh, doubles. Uh, as it doubles or triples, I think it is. So, I mean, is, is, is that kind of... Uh, uh, Come to a halt. The, the 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 new system um, that will uh, is partially online and will totally come online is a thousand years ahead. So okay. forget speeds, um, forget data. Yeah, there's there's this myth that the greater computational cycles equals intelligence. That is not true. That's not yeah. functionally true. Even even the computing world. This goes into areas of AI as well. The greatest science frontier that we face as a race is psi. It is about the inner mind. It is about us mastering our own spaces and the energy that we ourselves can generate in terms of imagination, creativity, and inner spiritual force. Does that have anything to do with wheels? and cogs and computers and hard drives and CPU cycles. We are we have been led down the prim, primrose path of materialism yeah. where spirituality is the next gateway to technology. Well, I think we are, people are stuck in a 3D world because that is reference to 3D technology. Yes. So we need to get away from that. One of the things somebody mentioned to me we were talking about something um, and somebody said, oh, are we going to have a little competition um, as to who's best, you know, over something? We're talking about something. And I said, no, I said, that's 3D thinking. We're going to work together to help yeah. teach. We're not going to be comp- we're not going to compete with each other. We're going to work together to help teach. And, you know, um, that's more 5D uh, thinking than 3D thinking. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Competition has destroyed us. Yeah. Because it plays that that plays into the divide and conquer. Yeah. Um, fear is another one and seducement mm. for external this was, things. 
this was the hallmark of the early MK Ultra programs was to create hive mind units. Yeah. Um, you can go and look up Duncan O'Finian and see what he reported about his childhood experiences in Cambodia in the 1970s, where a group of 12 children were assembled to go out onto the battlefield, join hands together, and use a psi network to destroy an entire Cambodian army unit that was coming through from the other side of Vietnam. Um, we have been deliberately divided both in our own split conscious minds and as a race of people to not learn to work cooperatively. The harnessed power of the human mind as a collective is a force beyond anything we can imagine in terms of CERN or nuclear bombs or anything else. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Steve. Roy Thomas, this one's for you from Deep Sea Diver on People's Internet Radio. He says, Thomas, what's Trump up to on Tuesday? Um, I've no idea. <laughs> it's, uh, I presume, oh, it's the, uh, I presume it's referring to the summit with the uh, Hong Kong. Uh, all that, all that is theatre. You know, there was reports um, that it was going to get cancelled, and it did get cancelled. And I saw people on our show uh, ignore that. It's all theatre. What has already taken place is North Korea is going to denuclearize. It's nothing to do with North Korea or Kim Jong Un, and everything to do with both Childs wanting another uh, base because they're losing power in many other uh, regions. And the talks have already gone on. The summit is the external view for the public. The internal yes. internal view, it's already taken place. And that's what people have to really start grasping. Uh, we too often we're seeking the external, whether it's re over religion or or money, is all external. Uh, look, I've done hard work. Well, uh, have you done hard inner work? Uh, and we have to start internalising because everything is inside of you: your truth, your God, you name it. It's all there. It's like the kids Amen, the, brother. Like the kids with the PSI field, like on it's, it's, you know, it's a PSI field. We all have that ability, and technology is a denigration of our own abilities. You have to remember that. You people think, oh, technology is helping us. No, it's it's denigrating our own abilities. We have more abilities than we realise, and this is what the reduction program is all about. So it, it's just little me. What can I do? I can't can't do this, and I can't do that. No, you can do everything. You've just forgotten. Mm. And once people start seeing that, you, you know the cabal. The, the, the reality is, it could be, uh, say it's, uh, you know, I'll use the, the figures that uh, Ronald Bernhardt gave, eight to eight and a half thousand, thousand people. It could actually be less. Well, why are we worried about eight and a half thousand people with over seven billion? Mm. I don't think it's it's a case of worrying about the 8,000 people. I think, um, as you said, what they use are threats and violence um, against the but people. That's all they have. Yeah, I know. That's, that's I know. Got. But I mean, for some people, that's enough to say. You know, sending in their 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 boots and their gangs and you know the paramilitaries or whatever they use to go in and threaten people. And if people are threatened, then obviously you know maybe that's enough for some people to stop what they're doing, even if they're trying to do good. And that is the, and that's, you know, that's a, the fear factor. Now, I know you said, Thomas, that there's been a number of times that your life has been threatened. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure Kim has, and, and uh, uh, other people have, yeah. as well. Um, and you have to, you have to kind of weigh it up. Well for them. Yeah, it yeah. didn't turn out too well for them, the ones that uh, attempted that. Mm. Okay, well, if we, I suppose if we were in the same boat, if people who were going to put their neck out were in the same boat to know that they were, had a level of protection or things would be sorted, then I think they would probably step forward more. Uh, and maybe that's what's needed. The people who are prepared to step forward and put their neck on the line, that they have some level of protection. Um, and then you'd probably find more of them would step forward. But then... Uh you're looking for external protection. You've got your own internal protection. Well, no, you can do your spiritual protection and your shadow side, but that doesn't stop somebody coming up and sticking a knife in you. 
Uh, if you if you develop yourself sufficiently, yes, it can. Yeah. Yes, it can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, saying. most people most people live in fear, and fear is a debilitator of your ability to function on a higher level of energetic power. Once you begin to overcome fear, you will begin to unlock psi anyway, because your subconscious mind begins to spring forth. I mean, we here's the here's the problem. We're split inside of our own consciousness. The fact that we have a subconscious mind should appall you because that tells you that at some point you were disconnected from another internal process. So effectively protection begins with shielding on a spiritual level. You can walk around a corner and disappear from an enemy. You can walk through a minefield and never be hit. People have done it. It's historically reported. Yeah. And the fact that you can grasp that concept and begin to believe in it is is a key to unlocking your own personal power. Mm. Absolutely. Okay, well, that's something that we need to look into, I think, or do another show on. That sounds very interesting. Right, we go over to the question. Steve? Uh, yeah, I just want to uh, say, say thanks to Peter. Uh, just uh, Peter gave us a link there for... Uh, nexusnewsfeed.com which he said it was, it's a site it was a paid site it's now free it's a nexus magazine he says daily news site and information on health UFOs etc so thanks for that Peter um, yeah um, Randy Monsanto uh, Graham was wondering any insight into why Monsanto is being dismantled and sold to Bayer or Bayer uh, and he says uh, white hats question mark mm. White hats? No, I don't think so. No. Bayer, Bayer, Bayer is a is a, is a is a Nazi company yeah. that has been around since the 1930s, to my knowledge. And the fact of the matter is, they've simply taken Monsanto in because they're much stronger financially. And right now, Monsanto is being outed and exiled in certain EU countries. They can't sell their products anymore. Bayer, being a, a German Nazi company, will bring them in under the wing and try to protect the assets there. It's simply a, it's a cover your ass move. Yeah, yeah the, the Monsanto is collapsing in on itself, and that's a, a, another example of our fight back because it, it's the people that exposed Monsanto, the old sense of community. Yeah, and now they're reducing. They're trying to mask it into a broader company, but it's not going to work because people will remember and link with Bayer with and, uh, and the links with the Second World War and them. And, and this version of white hats are the same group. White hats, as in pointy white hats, KKK, same group. Right, okay. So don't, don't get mixed up with the, the white hat. It's, it's as bad as the red pill, taking a red pill. No, take no pills. Right. So so basically the, 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 the message there is that Monsanto is going to be now under the control of Bayer. So we have to just kind of obviously uh, look at Bayer's products and uh, treat, uh, give them, them a wide berth, obviously. Just a name change. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, they changed the name of uh, aspartame to amino sweet, didn't they? Yeah. Is that the new name? Because people cottoned on to the fact that aspartame was bad. Mm-hmm. So they changed the name, well, but still the same well, that's product. A sign, that's a sign of us winning. Yeah. The fact that they have to change and people don't recognize that or they're not recognizing it enough. But that is an example of people power and forcing them to change their way of operation. And it's happening yeah. on all, all levels. You need to look at the news sometimes through the mirror. Mm. And you have to understand that these are disruptions of their business operations, not um, disruptions of the people's interests. The people's interests are showing up as these blips on the map, such as Bayer acquiring Monsanto. There's a whole bunch of corporate acquisitions in play right now, where companies are being folded up into larger umbrella corporations, be- not because of the valuable assets, but because these these companies are trying to protect key elements of their business structures. And it's getting harder and harder for them to operate because of the capital market shrinking and the fact that markets are shrinking and they no longer have any competition and they still can't make any money. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. Steve? Uh, Dougie has a question. Um, I'll throw it out and then we'll, we'll see where we go with it. Um, but 
He says, what do the guests think is happening to the increasing amount of people that are missing in the national parks and other locations? Abduction by inner earth races, genuinely missing, or are they going to other dimensions? Do you want to take it first, Thomas? Uh, it can be a combination of all three. Um, it, this is going to be, um, they say the, the ET narrative is... Uh, the big issue, but the big issue is to do with children and what's gone on with children here uh, in the tribal people, the indigenous uh, people, uh, and uh, everyday populace. It's uh, it's beyond epidemic. You know, um, I I put out a figure, and this was a, a national data figure of 500,000 American children go missing permanently each year. Wow. Half a million. And that was a low figure. The actual figure is near 900,000. Uh, and people are being used in, in a such a way, whether it's the sex industry, whether it's uh, organ harvesting, whether it's um, whether people like this or not, I'm going to tell you, uh, food, because we're not top of the food tree, we're just not. And uh, this is the main issue that has to stop. Uh, any development in, of a civilization depends on the teaching the children the right way to go on uh, on a progressive path. What we've done with education and what we've done with the uh, health and the pharmaceuticals and the food and the water poisoning is all destroying the children and subsequently a progression of the species. We have to get to the bottom of this child um, uh, issue because it's it's beyond pandemic. It's, beyond pandemic. It is, man. I did say to Steve there, I think it was last week, I said to you, Steve, all I seem to see of people reporting paedophile gangs here, there and everywhere. And just, yeah. it's just, as you say, it's a pandemic, not an epidemic, because it's just incredible uh, how much is going on and why yeah. it's going on. Well, we know why it's going on, but does that go back to the fact that there is one third of us organic and the rest is synthetic and they're soulless and, you know, is that is that part of it? I mean, it can't, they, they, all these people can't be sick. They can't, they can't suffer from, they're not all, they can't be all paedophiles. It could be that, I mean, you're talking about on the planet, maybe a third of the people being paedophiles on the planet. I mean, that's just madness. Well, there's 60 to 70 percent in Congress who are paedophiles. It's part of that, that society that where they'll get the fame, fortune, and they'll get the lead roles in this, and they all get promised the same thing. And what they're finding out now is they've all been promised, uh, like the uh, certain prime ministers and presidents, they've all been promised to pin up. Well, uh, now they're all found, no, I, that was me. Uh, no, I got told I was getting it. Well, uh, they're finding out the lies. But, the, you know, I do a, a show each Thursday, and every time I do a show, I remember... It bothers me. Mm. 350,000 children have gone missing permanently or died of malnutrition every single Thursday I do a show. That's just, that has to stop. That's just nuts. That's 350, and they're official figures. Jesus. That, I mean, that's uh, surely anybody that has any empathy whatsoever can feel this, this, just this, that it's just disgraceful and disgusted that fellow human beings. I mean, I, something I want to say. We, I was down uh, with uh, a group of lads, the men shed, and we we're talking about places being, uh, you know, and Amsterdam came up, and I've been over there in business a few times in the past, and you know, you go down to the red light district. And the first thing, you know, the lads will say, oh, do you see the women in, 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 in the window? You know, and the whole idea is that, you know, does, for people who've never been to Amsterdam on the red light district, um, there's all these kind of windows and there's girls in them and you can go up and, and pay your money and they'll shut the, the blinds and you have your wicked way and then you uh, then leave. 
And, you know, when you go down there, I remember saying this to my partner when we were there, and I said, how far has humanity come? I mean, they were doing this probably 2,000, 3,000 years ago in, you know, slavery. And here we are in 2018, and we're still doing it. Randy? Um, Yeah, I'll just add to that that a lot of this goes into loose harvesting. Yeah. as well as um, human experimentation and obviously sexual exploitation. I just was looking at numbers yesterday. Um, one in six males, I'm only talking men here, males have been sexually molested in their early life, sometime between the ages of um, roughly 10 to 16 years old. That's a shocking number when you look at the number of men. Uh, that's just one demographic on top of the endless demographics of missing children, exploited children, children that have been herded out by government agencies, militaries, and private corporations for purposes uh, just too gruesome to even describe. That human trafficking is a global market. Oh, it may even be, uh, let's shall we say, an off-world Cosmic. market. Cosmic. Market. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of off-world going on, and that's another show that we can talk about. Okay, <laughs> I'm just watching the time here. We have about 10 minutes, give or take. So, um, Steve, you have more questions there? I have a, a comment. Jim, uh, recently, or earlier on, you were talking about the human frequency and, and uh, people being, humans not being able to leave the earth and that they may die if they left the earth. And the captain on People's Internet Radio says, uh, that's why the bodies can never leave the earth, he says. The bodies were created here, but not the soul. So obviously the soul, the body, I'm, I'm guessing that if we were to try and go past that, leave leave the earth, then the but body uh, would die. Again. Again, this is reductionism because uh, the idea, um, once people recognize their own abilities, which we all have, nobody's more special than anybody else. Why do you need tin cans to travel? Where the, you know, people are taking, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of uh, ayahuasca's and everything. Where do you think they're going? They're not sitting in the same space time. They're going elsewhere. So, did they need a craft? No. No. That's reductionism again. And and so we have to get over over this. That we, we always going to need external technology, and we we always reducing our, our our own natural abilities of who and what we are. Because once that goes. Uh, global or even sufficient where it reaches a tipping point it's all over there's so many uh, simple steps where it's all over and people just have to uh, believe in themselves and trust in themselves more we mm. don't need tin cans to travel okay we d- well again it's down to us learning the abilities this knowledge this knowledge obviously has been taken away from us because knowledge is power and if they have the knowledge and we don't then they have the power. So this, the abilities that we can, we have, all of us have, um, is just something that we have to be given back or being taught how to reactivate them. Maybe this whole deactivation of our DNA, the twelve strand DNA, is is that part and parcel of the of us learning and getting these abilities? Uh, say, Randy. Well, we're not going to get the abilities. We're going to reawaken them. Yeah. They're, they're latently well, dormant uh, in us. <clears throat> Thomas, go ahead. No, no, I agree. I was just nodding and agreed. I, I, I think if you go back and you look at the, the vestiges of ancient history that we have, if you look at the, the legacy of the Vimanas that occurred in the, in the Sanskrit lit- literature, if you just look at the person they call Jesus, who was able to walk through walls, walk on water, I mean, the Western Christian establishment accepts the fact that a man was on this earth, historically speaking, was able to walk through solid matter, 
was able to raise the dead, was able to heal the sick, was able to get out of a boat and begin to traverse not just waters, but storm waters and pull a, a fellow servant along with him. If we just take those legends on face value for what they are, they're telling us something about ourselves that has been suppressed. But isn't the comment in the Bible that uh, Jesus said, you, you'll be able to do what I do and more? These things and greater, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's all about believing in yourself. Yeah, and the trouble is, the system is designed, society is designed to try and get us to say, well, if you don't look like this, or you don't act like this, or you don't have this car, or you don't have this house, then you are not worthy. So it's all about kicking you. Uh, and well, who keep... cares about the system? Yeah, exactly. That's materialism, yeah. <laughs> who cares Perfect. about the system? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, no. We, we've had enough of them in their system. It doesn't work. It fails. Okay, well, listen, we have about five minutes um, left, uh, give or take. So let's just sum up um, what's happening at the moment and just get, I'll get your take, Thomas, and Randy's take. And on a positive note, what, uh, what, what do you see the next six months or the next, say the next six months or, and maybe next year, what do you see happening? Want to go first, Randy? Okay, so. I have a window right now that I'm watching. It starts um, with the solstice, which is coming up very quickly on us on the 21st of June, and runs a window through mid-October of this year. And what I'm seeing right now is that I think we're going to see significant landmarks. First off, on the economic landscape, I think uh, the the economies themselves, not just here in the United States, but even around this world are going to begin to actually show how precarious they are. And, and I think that's going to be significant for people to realize that they need to begin to deal with the subject of money and materialism on another level. Uh, politically, it's going to be very unstable as well. I'm expecting to see, I'm expecting to see exodus out of Washington, D.C., not just within the Trump administration, because I think that's a revolving door anyway, but resignations in Congress and resignations from higher offices around the world where people will just simply resign. Because I think the pressures coming to bear on the system are going to be intolerable for those who are in power. Yeah. Okay, Thomas? The, the, uh, the monetary system, I agree, um, we may see big changes um, that will um, tip, do a full 180 from a uh, debit system, uh, a debt system to a credit system. Mm -hmm. uh, that's um, at various stages currently. Uh, politics, um, I agree with Rand. Uh, I agree with Randy. Uh, it's collapsing in on itself because the system no longer works. We can't expect, uh, it, you know, uh, because not enough of us, has, in some aspects, has been allowed to step up, but not enough have also put themselves forward into those roles. What's taken place now is bad guys are exposing bad guys. And, and it, it goes all the way up to the top. You know, Trump, the, nobody uh, in that corporate world gets to where... Uh, uh, that level of success, if that's what you want to call it, without trampling all over people and cheating and lying and stealing. It, 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 it's set up that way. Yeah. So it, it, what you're seeing now is bad guys exposing bad guys. So there's certain appointments that you think, you know, I've mentioned in our shows, Guiliani and Bolton and a few other people go, why, why is he putting that in? Because he knows what's going on and he's exposing the other one. And then he exposes back, and then the media goes, well, we don't like this appointment. Uh, uh, let's expose them. And then Trump goes, fired. Yeah. And that's pretty much the strategy that's going on. It's like Gina Haspel, you know, torture chambers in, in Thailand, and she destroyed all the videos. She's now the head of the CIA. She knows what's going on. She knows what's being exposed, and she's going to part-expose it also. 
until she fulfills her purpose and then she will get fired. And so that's uh, where we're at with politics. Uh, it's all theatre uh, anyway. Um, and it's not something that people should really be go too deep into because it's just them cleaning house in, a, in essence and we have to step up. I, I think, uh, can I just add to that, that I, I think people have to start looking at things in a 5D way rather than a 3D against anything that uh, that goes against fighting somebody else or goes against somebody else or you're in competition with somebody else or anything that's kind of uh, against something is a 3D way of thinking we have to stop that we have to change our consciousness and be aware of that that that's a 3D way of thinking and we have to switch and start thinking 5D where we work together yeah the um, on an ET level um, the uh, communication lines and uh, the has increased uh, to a certain level and the overall drive is to work together and correct past mistakes not, not all but sufficient have tilted the balance that's why the SSP is no longer allowed to operate in certain realms. They're, they're, you know, they're stuck. And um, if they continue to play games and try to access things that they shouldn't do anymore, that because they've been blocked, it's declared uh, against the peace treaty, an act of war and a shoot-to-kill policy is underway. So that's the ET side of things. There's a lot more cooperation going on between the different species, um, some have held their hands up, others haven't. Um, you know, a portion of blame is kind of pointless at this point. We're all we're all to blame because we've all got along with it for far too long. Um, the the changes in technology will be drastic. Uh, whether it gets implemented in the next six months remains to be seen. Um, the increase in energies will be incremental, so that people can absorb it. Um, and that will change the whole parameters of how this planet resonates and operates uh, and will impact all aspects of life. And so you're going to see a lot more people losing it because uh, the masks of illusion is coming down in record pace now where they can't mask everything anymore. It's all being put out and they're, and they're Masks have dropped, and to be quite honest, uh, uh, we have to uh, take partial blame. There's not many too nice people. There's always someone wanting to outdo each other, or compete each other, or knock each other off, or knock each other down. That has to stop going forward, mm. and that applies to the people. That applies to uh, governments and countries. You know, just because there's no oil in North Dakota doesn't mean it belongs to the American government. It belongs to the world's people. So let's stop doing that. Let's quit with the uh, silly tariffs. Uh, you know, Trump's right with the tariffs because um, America has been raped for everything. And, and the world needs to know it. The, we, the people in, in America, have been raped left, right and centre with uh, black budget projects, with wars that we've had to fund, uh, with technology that we've had to fund, and NATO and the UN, all of which has been funded by the American people and genocide right around the world, and we're tired of it. Mm. And so, uh, you know, why do you need tariffs? Why, why don't it, we've got some uranium, uh, as long as you're not using it for destructive purposes, uh, you give us some oil or something else. You know? yeah. It belongs to the people. And, and people have to start remembering that banks and governments don't have money. They have our money. And that was going to be to see a change going forward. The other side of this is, from what we would call an OPSEC, that's operational security standpoint, it's simply not viable for this world to be placed in the position it has been placed for a few hundred thousand years. Um, Earth, which... Thomas is called Midgard on his program, and I like that because that's actually true. It's a strategically placed world 
It's a portal, and it's also a pass-through for other worlds as well. Yeah. Destabilizing and continuing to destabilize Earth and its inhabitants represents an unconscionable security risk to all of the galactic groups uh, out there right now. And I think that's become very apparent that if this world teeters towards destruction of either the world itself or its people, there will be a destabilization that will cascade out. So it's my understanding that the Various groups working together are cognizant of that fact, and they understand that we simply need to come to the table and and stop this war on humanity yeah. and on this world. Okay. Yeah. Well, brilliant. Lads, we're going to have to leave it there because it's uh, way past our, our time. We just have to finish oh. up the show. We have about 10 minutes. So a uh, big thanks for Thomas and Randy for coming on the show. Uh, brilliant information. We're definitely going to have to do a part two because the stuff that we haven't even got into about the matrix and, and the and the the programming and the quantum programming of the system and uh, the, you know uh, uh, abnormalities happening that people are seeing and noticing in the program in the matrix and we haven't even got there yet. So I think we'll have to do a part two. But um, Thomas, give us your details there and um, let us know what uh, uh, where people can find you. Um, the show's on uh, Spreaker.com, uh, www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash 895-5881, or you can find us on the articles website, thinkdifferent.thepeoplesclub.org. Brilliant stuff. Randy? Off planetradio.com, you can find just about everything else you need to know. We have a Patreon group if you're interested in deeper stuff. You can join that group. The YouTube channel's there as well. If I can, I just want to point out, I will be in Copenhagen in September, from September, uh, 16th, 15th and 16th to speak at, uh, Open Mind Conference. And if people want to, want to, uh, I know you have a lot of listeners in Europe who are accessible to that. Openmindconference.com is where they can find information on that. Brilliant Good stuff. stuff. Brilliant stuff. Oh, lads, listen, we're not going to go off to a musical break because we've only got about nine minutes left. So can you guys just stay there? We'll just bring down your Skype. And what we'll do is we're just going to finish up the show and we'll have a quick chat with you um, after uh, the, at, at the top of the hour. So. Yeah. Um, just gives a few okay. minutes there. Okay, folks, um, brilliant information from Thomas and Randy. Um, loads and loads to think about, loads of things to research. But the one thing that I think we all have to consider is to try and get away from this 3D way of thinking where it's competition and I'm against you and, and all this kind of stuff. That's really old-fashioned and we, we, let's move away from that and let's be working together And because it's, it's us that can make a change. We can change the world. We can change the people around us. We can change the things around us. But we have to make the effort. And I know it takes energy. And a lot of people don't like change. But change is inevitable. It's going to happen. So you have to embrace it. And and after listening to the show tonight, have a think about what can you do to change? Is there something even small in your life that you can make a change for the better or positive? You know, it might be even the case that there might be somebody who's a negative that's really annoying you that you might want to say, right, I'm going to stay away from them. I'm not going to go near them because they're pulling my energy. You know, and the one thing about when your your when your conscious levels rise and your energies rise, fewer and fewer people come into your circle because you can't tolerate that kind of negative energy. I know I've, I'm feeling that and I have reduced my circle quite considerably. Um, because I can't deal with people being, you know, pulling negative energy and throwing negative negative energy in, you know, and complaining and moaning and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's, you know, um, so I try and kind of reduce that as best I can. But everybody can do the bit and everybody, everybody does the bit like a ripple in a pond. We can make the positive changes that's needed. Um, right. Do you want I, to add to I just want to add to that. Yeah, I mean, um, in relation to kind of, you know, getting away from all the competition and all this, you know, me against you and whatever. That's so difficult to do because everything, you, 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 everything that life is based upon is competition. When you think about True, it. True, it's the way the I system's mean, been yeah, set up. I yeah. mean, you go for a job, you're against the guy sitting beside you, mm. in, you know, in, in the room. And you look at, look at all, all sports. Mm. All sports is pitting either one team or one person against another. I mean, mm. even, you know, your next door neighbour. 
well, we both know, both Alan and I know people who are like this. The neighbour gets a new car, so I'm getting a new car. Because, mm. you know, he's, 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 he's one of me now. And, you know, it, the whole thing is a competition. So, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to make that change. Mm. It's got, probably ne- ne- nigh on impossible. No, it is, it is possible. It is but, possible. You just have to be how, aware of it and not buy into it, you know. But how I mean, do we, how it, do we it, not easy, buy into easy, it? Uh, easy, right? We, and we, we've done it, right? You you have a credit card, right? You know you could go out and spend five grand on that credit card to buy an up to date car, right? I could use a credit card. Is an credit card is a necessary evil, right? Because when you don't have money, to handy. But I could go out and buy a five grand car and have a really flash car. But I will owe that five grand. And why would I be buying it just so I can drive around in a bigger, flashy car and the neighbours see the flashy car? No, I'm buying the cheaper car, which is fully paid for, and it's not costing me anything on credit card interest or credit cards. And yes, it is a bit of a banger, but look, it gets me from A to B, and it does the job. As long as it's reliable, that's what I'm concerned about. I'm not going to buy into that materialism. Well, Bentleys are reliable. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, by the way, I love your new Maserati. It's very, it's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Next week, we're going to have on Kate from Karma Hemp. If you remember, we got Kate and her husband on last year, and it was all about the CBD ice cubes, which they kindly sent me and Steve, and they were great. And ever since Kate and her husband came on the show. Karma Hemp was all over the internet and they, they said that the business zoomed up. Loads of people were ringing them up and they, they said they were, they thanked us and they said, well, it's great. You know, they deserved the promotion and what they were doing. They're trying to help uh, people. And um, so we've asked uh, Kate to come back on to tell us how they're doing and the new products that they have. And also we're going to have Adele from Homeopathy. There's a, um, there, there is a, a course which G- uh, Steve's going to read out in a minute. Um, that's going to be on the Irish Society of Homeopaths uh, is going to be on this week and we're going to have Adele on next week telling us all about it as well. Steve? Yeah, the Irish Society of uh, Homeopaths is going to bring bring you the special screening of Just One Drop. That's going to be on Wednesday the 13th of June at 6.30pm. That's going to be the Lighthouse Cinema. That's in Smithfield and Dublin. Jim Corr is going to be the MC for the evening uh, of the screening. And Jim is not only famous for being a singer, musician, songwriter and a member of the internationally acclaimed band The Corrs. Jim is also a keen advocate of natural health and healing, just in case you did not know. Uh, just One Drops, Just One Drop tells the little known story of homeopathy, the most controversial system of medicine ever invented. So again, it's going to be at 6.30pm Lighthouse Cinema. Uh, on Wednesday the 13th of June not far away actually it's uh, well it's actually next week next Wednesday it's uh, this yes. Wednesday coming yes um, so as we said during the show there folks if anybody's interested in learning how to set up their own radio station and want to know about it and what's involved email us at info at oamradio.com and then we'll, we're more than happy to help you get set up and get started and tell you what you need and how it all wires together. We've, al- we've already done one or two radio stations people um, before have asked us and we've helped them out and we're more, ha- more than happy to do that to give you the information because the more radio stations we have, the more people putting out the truth and putting out the information, the quicker the system will change. So we need people to do that. You know, you might feel that, oh, I'm going to be a bit mic shy, I'm a bit nervous. Me, myself and Steve, you know, if you listen to our first show, it uh, wasn't our best day, was it really? <laughs> we did it. No, it wasn't actually. <laughs> um, Cringe worthy, I think, is the word but we, we use. We just had the, uh, the, we just had the interest in putting the information out there. We're not professional DJs. We're not professionally trained. We're just two dads who are concerned about what's going on in the world. And we want to talk about it. And we thought, well, if one or two people want to come along and listen to our show, then happy days. But we'll just sit down and have a cup of tea and talk about it anyway. And if you want to tune in, happy days. So, you know, we did actually find out, I just want to mention very quickly, we did find out Alan showed me Jordan the show this evening. Um, we ha- Obviously, we have access to see how many people are actually online listening at any one time. And let's just say it's in the hundreds. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, you know, there's, well, there's, that's good to know. There's not just one or two listening. There's definitely a hell of a lot more. So, thanks to yeah. everyone who's listening. To well, the, it, it, the more listening, the more, you know, being um, educated by what we're talking about, where our guests coming on. Um, the better it is. That's the way we see it. We're not, we're not in any competition with audience numbers, but the more people listening, the more they're tuned in to the information, the more they're learning from it. That's the way we see it. So if you're shy or you're concerned about or you're thinking about it, contact us 
and we we're more than happy to help you. And then when you get set up, we'll promote you and put your put the word out there that you have a radio show. So yeah, that's just remember that's the OYM casting couch. <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna have a casting couch? Are yeah, we? with your host Alan uh, Wiseman. <laughs> Wiseman. But Weinstein, sorry. Yeah, Weinstein. Now you have to bring a, a cake or chocolate or something. You know, <laughs> forget about the sex. Just bring something, some chocolate. That, yeah, we like our chocolate. Okay, listen, we have to go. Have a, a great week, guys. I hope the weather stays good for us over here. Fingers crossed. And uh, as we say, we have guests on next week. If you have any news, send it over. Give it, let us know. We, we like looking at that. And uh, any feedback or any information. Take care of yourselves. For myself, Alan James, take it easy. Bye-bye. Okay, yeah, it's been great uh, having you all tune in tonight. And uh, obviously, don't forget to check out also uh, Thomas's show on the Spreaker Network and also Randy Morgan's as well. Do check, do put those names into the search engines or use the links that we had on the chat room there. And uh, check out their shows also. Uh, some great information uh, from other perspectives and not just from the Irish perspective. Okay, we're going to hand over the People's Internet Radio. We'll be back in the same time next week. So until then, take care for myself, Stephen George, and all the team here in the OAM Bentley and me the, and you and the jacuzzi <laughs> uh, we'll say good night take care bye bye